you're gonna do NaNoWriMo, then you're gonna need shit to do that, okay? So for the last video before Preptober, I thought I'd go for something a little bit lighter than my normal fare. If you've been with me for a while, you might have noticed that a lot of my videos are quite what even is a story. It's like very much methods and theory about plot and structure and story. But with only one week left before NaNoWriMo begins, you don't have time to implement a whole new fucking system of shit. <laughs> so I thought we would keep it light and I will just share with you my NaNoWriMo survival kit. And can you guess what I've done? I've divided them into categories. I love categories. Look, it's just easier than having one giant list, okay? My brain does not like one giant list full of shit. I can't hold that in my head at once. Whereas this is easier. Why am I defending my categorization to you? Let's move on. I'm very excited again to be partnering with For The Words on this video. For the Words is an RPG for writers where you embark on a journey and use your word count to defeat monsters. It's definitely one of the most fun ways to build a daily writing streak. Now is also a great time to give it a go because they've just launched their new site at ForTheWords.com and NaNoWriMo on For the Words is kind of like Christmas. There are global challenges, special monsters and extremely important accessories to win for your avatar. So if you head down to the doobly-doo down below this video, you will find a special Preptober coupon code and you can go and fight some word monsters. So I guess to start with, I am a NaNoWriMo rebel this year in that I am not writing mostly new words. And um, for NaNoWriMo, I am going to try and finish my last revision of my novel, which I've been working on for a while. You may have heard of it. It's called North of the End. And this is the box that I keep my manuscript in. I kind of hate this box, to be honest. It's really ugly. It's also got a ribbon instead of like a popper thing to close it, which is really inconvenient, but it's what I've got for now. I will be revising on paper for the most part. Um, I have new scenes to write as well to fill in some gaps um, and I will probably be doing those. I'll probably be typing those and then printing them off and then adding it to the manuscript. I have started to try and get out to work as much as possible, unless I have to be at home to shoot a video for you fuckers. <laughs> but obviously I'm not gonna carry this whole fucking thing around with me. So what I tend to do, um, because I like to revise on paper, is um, to carry chapters at a time. Sometimes even just pages at a time, and I use these little clips. No, I'm still working on the last one, but this is like where I'm at in terms of like what I've done, and then, and you'll see these are much neater. Um, and this is like the chunk of manuscripts that I've still got to revise. Oh my God, I have to do all of this in November. What am I gonna do? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, so that is what I will be doing. So the first category other than my manuscript is tech. And the first thing on my list is my laptop. Nothing much to say about mine. It's a MacBook Pro. I am rather fond of it, but I don't like carrying it around. And that's all there is to say about that. And the next thing I've got is earphones. You have to listen to stuff while you write. It's the rules. Um, and I personally like to listen to ambient noise. And I also like those lo-fi hip hop YouTube channels. I'm such a sucker for that shit. So those are just Apple ones. And the next thing in my kit is a Bluetooth keyboard. And um, I only got this fairly recently. Um, it's from the Apple store. It's called Keys To Go. Um, so it was not particularly cheap. It was like 50 quid, but it's super flat, as you can see. It's like really thin um, and really light, which is really handy. So it fits in my small handbag. And the great thing about this is that it could connect to an iPad if I decide to get an iPad at any point, but it connects to my phone because I think there's real value in your when you're writing in not being able to see what you're writing. If I use this with my phone, I can literally just turn my phone over and as long as I know it's connected and stuff, I can type away and not look at what I've done. But yeah, this also was originally um, a solution for me because like I said, I like to work out of the house. Um, I like to go out to a cafe or the library or whatever. I like to spend as much time out of the house as possible because I'm self-employed and if I stay here all the time I will go fucking crazy. But I also hate carrying my laptop around because I also use notebooks and I I'm not gonna change the fact that I use notebooks because I know analog works for me really well in some ways but it does mean carrying notebooks and laptop break my back. So um, I was like I need something, like I need some kind of middle ground here where I can still write video scripts and I can still write on my phone without having to carry my laptop around. And so that's what this is. Okay, so that's tech. 
Should we talk about apps and software now? Mm. The first one obviously is Scrivener. I have been using Scrivener ever since my first NaNoWriMo win in 2009. I got the discount code, I got it, I've been using it since then. I really like it and that's not gonna change. Um, but something I also got last year was the app for my phone. Um, so being able to sync those in between, it can be a little bit tricky sometimes and there are like, you do sometimes get conflicts, but I do find it really amazing to be able to see my whole novel on my phone. That's great. The next app is Ambient Noise Mixer. So this is the app version of a browser-based website. And obviously it's an ambient noise mixer. Um, it's probably the most um, powerful one in terms of like, it's got the biggest library of sounds and it seems to have like the most ways that you can use them. So there's lots of pre-made mixes that people have made on there already, but you can create your own. I personally spent basically a whole day trying to create some for myself. So I don't know if I would recommend creating some of your own um, and spending too much time on it if there are ones on there that you already like. That's a no-brainer um, and I can have it on my phone so it means that I can just plug in and be in my little bubble while I work. The next one is Scannable. This was like a recent thing that like I wasn't even looking for something like this but my friend Jen who uh, runs the Preptober Instagram um, and is amazing uh, recommended it to me because I was trying to take a picture, I was working with her for a day and I was trying to take a picture of a plot embryo for someone's novel navigation session, like their write-up and I could not get the light and stuff and she was like, oh, have you tried this app Scannable? And oh my God, it's so good. It's like revolutionary. It's basically just like a phone app where you um, can take a picture of a document and it scans it. And I found it so useful for taking shots of plot embryos that are finished um, and you know pages of brainstorming and stuff. I personally much prefer to brainstorm on paper than I do digitally, um, but that does mean that I end up with sheets of paper around my whole life. So my strategy for this now is going to be to brainstorm on paper, take a scan of it in Scannable and then recycle the paper. Um, I go through quite a lot of paper as a writer and I have just accepted that and I have made the commitment to recycle all of the paper that I use that I can. The next app is Discord and again I'm biased and I'm kind of plugging myself here but um, I have a Novel Craft Lounge Discord server um, for my patrons and we talk about our novels and we have like lots of off-topic chats but we also um, share plot embryos and discuss them and give feedback and share pros and brainstorm together and stuff and it's really amazing and we have a NaNoWriMo quest going um, throughout November where we will be able to input our word counts and level up our um, profiles I guess and um, kind of like an RPG kind of way. That's gonna be really fun and I'm definitely gonna be checking in with the people on the the Discord, the Novel Craft Lounge um, as, as we go through November because I have a feeling we're all gonna go slightly fucking crazy <laughs> in a good way. I'm also gonna be using the Apple Podcasts app a lot. I really love podcasts because um, I can listen to them while I'm traveling and things like that, or while, while I'm doing things, while I'm getting ready to leave in the morning, while I'm doing the dishes. I found specifically though, like one of the best things to get me in the mood for writing for the day, because often I will wake up and be like, hey, don't want to do the writing today. Um, one of the best ways to get me in the mood for that is to listen to a writing podcast. So I have a handful that I like to go to. Um, and even if I'm not like getting anything out of it in terms of like oh I've learned a new technique from this episode something about just hearing people talk about writing almost no matter what they're saying gets me in the mood to write myself it makes me it just gets it churning away in there and so I find that really useful I guess I'll just recommend you the podcast that I listen to like why not I could do a whole video being like here are five writing podcasts that you should listen to but I could also just fucking tell you now so ones I like are How Do You Write by Rachel Heron. Um, she also has another podcast with someone else. I'm really sorry, I don't remember his name right now, but it's called The Writer's Well. It used to be called Pedal to the Metal. That's a good one. Um, 88 Cups of Tea with Yin Chang. Um, it's like interviews with authors. Um, so it's not really so much about the craft, but often you get their stories and stuff, which is really interesting. First Draft with Sarah Any. Um, that's a similar format to 88 Cups of Tea. The next app that I had on my list was Spotify, but since then <laughs> I've actually stopped using Spotify and I'm now uh, kind of trying out YouTube music. Honestly, 
I don't know if I like it all that much, but you need music, so whatever. The app for the music, okay? And then there's an app called Forest, which is basically a productivity app. And it basically, you set a timer for yourself when you're gonna work. And over the course of that time, you will grow a little tree. And if you break your concentration or if you go on your phone and do other things, then you kill the tree. <laughs> I tend to work in really short bursts. So like 20 minutes is like an ideal work uh, sprint for me. Um, but 20 minutes is only a bush in forests, like it's not a tree, like so they have different levels. And so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna fill this with bushes then. It's not as cool, but sure. So yeah, I've not actually used that one in a long time um, because I don't really feel like I've had to, but I might break it out again for NaNoWriMo. And in the past I have used Write or Die and depending on how many new scenes that I have to write, like new prose that I have to write, um, I may end up using it this year as well. And the last one is kind of esoteric. Um, it's the Seventh Sphere app, um, which is actually a Tarot and Lenormand app. Um, so I'm kind of interested in Tarot anyway, but I've actually found there's a way to use it for writing. And I specifically use it for brainstorming. Um, so one thing that I've done with someone else um, is that it's really good for fleshing out details of things. So like not if you if you need to brainstorm the answer to a specific question, like how does this character get from blah 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 to blah blah blah. Although actually maybe it would work for that. But if you're looking to like solve a problem, um, it's maybe not as good. But if you're looking to just like come up with some ideas for details for like, what could this environment be like? Or how could I flesh out this character? And um, I found like the randomization aspect of this is really useful. So, so basically what I like to do is do a draw of the cards on the app. Obviously it's digital and so it just like randomly generates um, a couple of cards for you. And I like to look at what's there um, and using any kind of interpretations of the cards that I see fit, like anything that I read into the symbolism or anything, I ask, okay, so what are three different ways I could incorporate this idea or this concept in this card into what I'm working on? So for instance, if I came up with the snake card, I could be like, okay, what are three different ways that I could incorporate the idea of snakes or things related to snakes into this character? My first thought is obviously like, maybe they're a Slytherin. Um, and there's, yeah, you come up with other things. And it sounds pretty weird and random, but the randomness is actually really useful in that regard. And you can end up actually coming up with some really interesting and weird stuff that you never would have otherwise. The next category is novel materials and stationery. So like the actual things, for the book. I've already uh, showed you my manuscript, so that's obviously the main thing. But where would I be without my novel bullet journal? Um, so this is how I organise everything to do with my novel, basically. And anytime I have an idea or anything, it can just go straight in here because I will have it with me all the time. Um, I've got some um, post-its just stuck in the front here because I like post-its and they're handy. Like, I've got my NaNoWriMo spreads here um, and then I've just got my general writing stuff. If you are interested in seeing what else is in that, um, you can check out my Preptober bullet journal setup. Um, and also I've got an older video um, where I just flip through my entire novel bullet journal and you can see what's in there. Um, and of course, what would be the point in a notebook without any pens? So I've got this like really cheap pencil case that I don't particularly like, but it's about one of the only ones that I found that'll fit these Tombow pens because they're really long. I've actually discovered my favorite kind of pen to write with in the last few months, um, which is like, it sounds stupid, but it's kind of a big deal for me. So I actually, like I never really used to like gel pens all that much, but these ones are honestly amazing. They write so smoothly and it's just comfy and it like, yeah, it comes out super black and nice and um, they're just really nice to write with. So it's by Pentel and it's an Energel liquid gel ink. Post-its. Um, so I like to use post-its quite a lot. When you're revising, it can be really useful if you think of something that needs to get changed like before or after where you're at, um, it's really handy for that. Obviously, you need to make sure that you're actually going through and like actioning all the post-its before you're done. But um, yeah, I just find them really useful. I personally though have been searching for an alternative to like those bright yellow standard sticky notes for ages because they don't go with my aesthetic, okay? And I like stationery and I like things to match because I'm a fucking nerd. I also got this whole book, it's like a list book. So these are all sticky notes. You've got a long list kind of one 
um, you've got the sharp, I probably use this one the most, it's just a little kind of marbled square and then you've got these like little index notes as well. Um, so this is, I don't know what I would call it, like my brainstorming notepad, I guess. Um, it's a pad folio, it's that same kind of print. Um, so it's got a clipboard on the front and on the inside um, it's got a notepad, like a refill pad, and then a space for things. That's a session plan for someone. Um, so I need A4 sheets to brainstorm on basically all the time. So I needed something to carry those around, um, basically like a folder or something. And I figured the, the clipboard version is really good because that means that even if I'm sitting on a comfy sofa in a coffee shop or something and there's not a table, I can still work on stuff. Okay, the next two things are my outline this guy. I've had this for a while, it took a lot to put this together because I basically um, I had a previous outline, I discovered the plot embryo technique, I created all new plot embryos and then I broke them down into this outline. So the next thing is specific to me because I'm revising and it's not something that you're going to need for if you're drafting a new story, but it's my revision handbook. Um, and this is a document that I put together to refer to as I revise. Um, I got it printed and bound because I'm me. Yeah, I put in the effort to make it cute because I knew that I would probably want to use it more then. So um, I actually used some images from a webcomic called Shattered Starlight, which I really like and that's what's on the front cover. Um, in the back, I've just got my, I've got like a clip uh, with all my plot embryos. Um, and this is basically just like stuff that I need to remember and refer to as I revise. I guess it's almost like a mini story bible. It's like, it's it's not everything about the book, it's everything about this draft that I need to change, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I've got some character sheets and stuff in there as well, um, which you will recognize from my template. And the next category is Higge. So these are just like extra luxury survival kit items that help make NaNoWriMo and writing just feel a little bit cozier and more atmospheric and nice. Comfy things. So the first thing on my list is this necklace, which I'm wearing right now. Um, this is actually an aromatherapy necklace. So this little black bit, it's a little moon, and this little black bit is a lava stone. So it means that you can drop essential oils onto it and it kind of diffuses it. It's a necklace that smells of things. <laughs> and I'm a big believer in that, I guess, like writing rituals and stuff and the kind of like using the sensory elements to kind of hopefully get you into the mindset to do certain things. And so what I would like to do this NaNoWriMo is assign a certain oil to writing. I think it's gonna be Jasmine. Jasmine essential oil and I will use it on this necklace and I will wear the necklace while I'm writing and hopefully it will create the association that if you smell jasmine you should be writing and you're fine writing and you're happy writing. <laughs> when I say it like that it sounds a bit like brainwashing. I would like to create that kind of like sensory psychological link to hopefully in future get me into the zone faster. I also think my mascot is going to be Dedenne which is a Pokemon. Look how cute he is, I love him. Aww. Um, and Dedenne is just like whiny and sassy and just amazing. And I relate to him a lot. Look, you can't do NaNoWriMo without candles, okay? Where's the ambiance gonna come from? Candles, you need to burn things and it will help you write the words. I like candles and I like burning things, so I'm gonna be using candles. In terms of physical clothing comfort, I have my NaNoWriMo t-shirt, which NaNoWriMo actually sent me, which is really nice of them, because they're very nice people. Um, and I'm probably gonna be realistically wearing this a lot with pajama bottoms. These ones are my favorite because they're really soft. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm a scarf person. I love scarves. It's the best day of the year when you can finally wear a scarf again. My favorite scarf right now is this pink one. It's kind of salmon-y. Um, it's really soft and quite large. Like I would rather be in a room that's too cold, but be like wrapped up all warm than be in a room that's too warm, if that makes sense. So I actually quite like the feeling of having the window open even when it's really cold 
and just like being all bundled up and like, mm. but this is my favorite scarf right now and it will definitely feature. Please do tell me down below, what are some of the things in your survival kit that are most specific to you? Obviously we've got a lot of overlap. A lot of us have the laptop, the coffee, blah, blah, blah. But like, what's one thing in your survival kit that you haven't necessarily seen in a lot of others? I would love to hear that. And finally, this video is part of Preptober, a month long festival of pumpkin spiced NaNoWriMo prep and novel craft. The best way to get your hands on every drop of Preptober goodness is to sign up for emails. So if you go and do that, we will send you things in your inbox, including our free NaNoWriMo prep resources for this year. If you don't have those already, then you can get those by signing up for emails. Hmm. Have I mentioned emails? Okay, buns. Take care, good luck. You can do this. We can do this. We're gonna do this. Oh my God, I'm so scared. <laughs> it's okay, we can do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna write these damn novels. I wonder if you can hear that kettle boiling. If I'm cute, then I'll want to use it. If I'm cute, here, um, could you not please, thanks. If I'm cute, ba -ba 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 -ba. God damn. Listening to hearing, take a bite of cookie and relax. This is so stupid. Who invented this? <laughs> What is YouTube? Be thyself, Rachel. Be thyself. Frankly, I cannot be asked today. Oh, you're gonna regret this later when you're editing, Rachel. Why are you back there? Why have I done this to myself? <laughs>